Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Florida Majority. We are going to get right into it with Representative Chuck Clemens uh, from the 21st District in Florida. That's parts of Alachua all the way over to the coast in Gilchrist County, right? And we're excited that you're with us. We're just coming out of the Thanksgiving holiday. We're going into the Christmas season. How are things going in your part of the state? Well, in the District 21, which is Dixie, Gilchrist, in the western part of Alachua County, uh, things are, are pretty pretty well. Uh, it's not as good as it was 12 months ago when uh, inflation hadn't uh, reared its ugly head. You know, we just came out of Thanksgiving and the cost of turkeys and the cost of uh, the groceries uh, and the availability of the groceries were uh, far different than they were 12 months ago. They sure were. And, and you have kind of this interesting point of view on that, right? I mean, you grew up on a farm. I spent the early... Uh, years of my life on my dad's uh, chicken farm. Uh, we produced uh, eggs and uh, you, f you find out at an early age that uh, you know your, your food doesn't come from Publix or your nearest supermarket. It actually comes from producers and Florida's uh, agricultural industry is second only to the tourism industry and, and back during the economic downturn of uh, 2008 and 2009, uh, the agricultural industry, which is the breadbasket for the eastern seaboard during Thanksgiving, from Key West all the way up to New England, uh, most of those fresh fruits and vegetables that are on the table for Thanksgiving are grown and harvested and shipped from the Sunshine State. That's what's crazy, right? I mean, I grew up in a city. I grew up down in Miami. My food came from Publix and Winn-Dixie and, and, and Milan's and all these other places. I had, you know, I've learned so much. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we actually had Chairman Bobby Payne on as well from a rural part of the state. We joked that He's from a part of the state that when you just sort of drive through it sometimes and people don't realize that there's so such an importance uh, to Florida's economy that still gets uh, that's still driven out of uh, agriculture. Uh, you actually had the honor, right? Uh, you were appointed to the USDA by the Bush administration. What did you learn during your time there? And tell us again, I mean, how how is that compared to what you're seeing now out of the Biden administration? Well, I, I was very fortunate to be appointed by George W. Bush as the state director for USDA Rural Development, which, uh, you know, coming from a rural area, coming from a farming area, uh, rural development handles just about everything that's faceted uh, towards the rural development in the, in the USDA, and it affects all of our rural areas of Florida. So uh, I'm a Florida boy. I grew up here, and uh, I got to travel throughout the entire state making sure and listening to the needs of rural Florida and providing them at that time with the federal uh, grants, loans, and loan guarantees uh, to make sure that they continued their operation. So uh, I, was, I was very pleased. I see a big difference today um, in, in the way that uh, the federal guidelines are, are put forward and the way that uh, a barrier sometimes are there. We want to make sure that we lower those barriers and take those barriers down and make sure that uh, uh, the, the people who invested their time and their effort, sometimes their heritage, can continue to do those sort of things because it's invaluable to all Floridians. And you have been, speaking of Florida and the, the sort of uh, the value that you're bringing to the state, uh, both in your community now at the state level here in District 21 uh, as their state representative, but you've been a county commissioner. Uh, you've also you've served your community in various capacities, and now you also work for Santa Fe College as, as one of their vice presidents. And what's great about that is obviously Florida education. We're ranked. Uh, we continue to increase our ranking, and at the state level, uh, at the college level, we're number one in the country. What are you seeing? You know, being on the ground that that Florida is doing uh, from a Tallahassee level to empower our colleges, and what are the colleges doing to get to that level? Well, first, let me, let me say that I'm a first-generation college uh, graduate, that uh, my father, who was born in 1910, he only attended to the sixth grade, and he was the oldest of seven children. So in 1922, when he finished the sixth grade, he didn't go back to school, and he went to work in the workforce, uh, working in the agricultural fields to help feed his six brothers and sisters. That was not uh, an anomaly back in those days. But um, my father passed away when I was 19, and one of the things that he always instilled in me is an education is something that you do for yourself that others can never take away from you. So about 15 years ago when uh, I was finishing up my uh, career as a financial consultant, I had an opportunity to join uh, the administration at Santa Fe College, and as a first-generation college graduate myself, um, I raised money, and I've raised over 
uh, $60 million in that time to provide uh, first generation students and others with scholarship monies so that they can invest in their education so that no one will ever be able to take that away. And it is a noble opportunity and I've, I've just had a great time in the last 15 years. That is so powerful. And Santa Fe in its own right, uh, University of Florida, Florida State, I mean, we have some outstanding colleges, but Santa Fe ranks particularly high in something you're really proud of. What is that? Yeah, graduation rates. Um, Santa Fe College is a 2015 Aspen Award winner. Uh, overall number one community college at that time in the nation. We had the highest uh, graduation rates at uh, 79%. The average community college graduation rate is about 29% nationwide. Now remember that uh, not er everyone uh, goes to a community college to go to university. Many go back to uh, narrow the skills gaps that they have and during economic downtimes they go and take a class or two to brush up on their skills to, to try to get a better job. But Santa Fe College hones in on not only the, the college transfers, we transfer more uh, students to the University of Florida than the other 27 colleges combined, but we also have a very robust um, career and technical program. And you know uh, in the state of Florida, we're going to need uh, with 5 million new inhabitants between now and 2030, we're going to need plumbers, we're going to need electricians, and we're going to need HVAC uh, technicians in order for our economy to maintain its high level of uh, success as we do today. So we're training the uh, workers of Florida's or Florida's future right there in Santa Fe College. Our 28 state colleges, uh, like you mentioned earlier, are the best community college system in the United States of America. And Santa Fe College, like many others across the state, are training and, and really scaling up to meet the needs that haven't been demanded yet. So in 2030, when we have 5 million new inhabitants to Florida, we're going to know that uh, in our district as well, we're gonna need about 32,000 highly trained new people into the workforce just to maintain our uh, unemployment uh, or our employment levels. Education is certainly an important issue for families that are moving to the state of Florida. We've seen how people really are voting with their feet on that issue. No better example than Virginia, New Jersey, other states that are clearly rejecting uh, the, this other opposing viewpoint to ours, which is empowering parents, empowering students to pursue the best education they can. Um, but another important issue that's really important to families that are moving to the state of Florida is public safety. You have a kind of unique vantage point to the public safety arena, too, at university. Uh, you are the uh, police commissioner of the university, of the college, is that right? I am the police commissioner, uh, which is the civilian uh, administrative head of the Santa Fe College Police Department. You know, after the uh, student uh, murders in Gainesville in 1992, um, the then president and board of district trustees decided um, that they wanted to up their game to make sure that we had the highest level of professionalism to protect our students and our faculty and our staff. And I would mention also that Santa Fe College does that within the budget that they currently have. There is no additional uh, monies from the state or additional revenue sources. We maintain, like good conservatives, we maintain our budget and provide that service um, uh, just like we should within the, the dollars that we have to spend. But things could always get a little easier, couldn't they? And fortunately, Governor DeSantis over the past couple of weeks has been talking about wanting to bring in more police officers to the state of Florida, recruit those officers that feel slighted, that don't feel respected in some of their own communities in some of the other states, Illinois, New York, California, bring them to the state of Florida, incentivize them with bonuses, uh, higher pay. Is that something, is that, would that proposal affect the, the program that you're running there and how, how would that affect it positively or negatively? Well, I'm, I'm so uh, excited to support Governor DeSantis's initiative of, I think, for the $5,000 bonus for these uh, first responders, for these police men and women from other states who uh, had uh, the uh, opportunity to either uh, get an inoculation or to lose their job. And I don't think any, any public servant uh, first responder should ever be dealt with that particular decision tree. So Florida will open our arms and we will welcome those first responders and those uh, brave men and women who, who are separating us from, from the risk. Transitioning into uh, just sort of the rest of the year, right? We're wrapping up 2021, another sort of whirlwind year. 2020 didn't count for anyone, I don't, I don't think. Uh, but 2021, we, we kind of got back on track. 
Uh, we, we brought people, you all are having your, your uh, committee meetings in Tallahassee. Uh, lobbyists are coming in there, personal, you know, individuals are coming in there to meet with y'all. How different is it from, from what 2020 was? It's a difference of night and day. Yeah. And I tell my freshman friends who came in in 2020 when no one was allowed in the Capitol, you really don't understand uh, the, the, the liveliness and the, uh, the, the experience of having a capital full of uh, visitors who we all work for and a capital full of lobbyists, which, uh, you know, sometimes they're, they help us with things and sometimes they're against some of the bills that we carry, but it is a, a completely different feel than it was in 2020. You have a really unique vantage point in that because this is your third term. You're going in for your fourth term. Uh, you were successful, obviously, in, in, in uh, 2020, uh, winning by one of your highest margins yet. It's a very competitive area. Uh, and I think that you're going to continue to, to come back to Tallahassee because clearly you're serving your people well uh, and, and bringing a great energy and a great amount of experience in education and law enforcement and agriculture. You've touched a lot of the issues that are really important to people. What advice would you give to a freshman lawmaker uh, going into the second term, their, their, into their second term, into their second legislative session, just to anybody that's out there listening right now, you know, what do they have to do to really continue to get involved? And what does it take to get elected at the end of the day? I'm so, it's easy to, you know, armchair quarterback a lot of the issues that you all work on every day and say, oh, they should have gone further. They shouldn't have gone so far, this, that, and the other. But you all are really measured about these things. But what's it take? What's it? What's what's the nuts and bolts behind all of that? Well, first of all, um, I uh, have been elected uh, three times in a Democrat plus a four percent district. So um, yeah, I get uh, I get sometimes chewed on from both sides of the spectrum. Uh, but I do think that the fact that my family came to our community 198 years ago and my long-standing involvement in the community from the grassroots and rolling up your sleeves and actually volunteering and getting involved in a variety of organizations. But your question more specifically to some of the freshmen, um, listen twice as much as you talk. Listen twice as much as you talk. And the second one, and most important, is it's not just about submitting and passing bills that creates laws. It's about serving your community. And I'll give you two examples. Um, one is uh, we had a constituent that lived in the rural areas. There, there's not a lot of concrete. And his wheelchair was worn out. And so fighting, he was fighting with the, the state agency to replace the wheelchair because it was past its life expectancy. They were giving him a hard time because big wheel wheelchairs cost more than regular wheelchairs, the electric ones. And... Um, you only had to know the district to know that this gentleman had to go through sand and mud because he lived in the country. He didn't live where there's sidewalks and city streets. And so going to bat for that gentleman to get a new wheelchair that met his needs was very rewarding and had nothing to do with legislation. The second one was we had a constituent that um, was involved in an accident in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, he was in ICU. And his, his parents were spending all of their vacation time and their savings from District 21 to, to stay with their, their son in Atlanta. And he was, uh, had an opportunity to move to Shands, but there was no receiving uh, uh, physician. So uh, they said no, he couldn't move from Shands. In the meantime, they're, they're public servants. They work uh, in the school system. They were using all of their vacation and draining their savings to be with their loved one. And so uh, non-law wise, we were trying to help solve and resolve. We got him transferred to UF Shands where he was close to his family, close to his friends, and his family didn't have to drain their resources to provide that love and support during that time he was in intensive care. Those are the sort of things that are the difference between being elected and serving your district. Well said, sir. Absolutely well said. It's, it's about the people, right? And it's because of people like you that Florida continues to be on the just, just meteoric rise that we are right now. First in education, our, you know, our, our statistics and crime continue to decrease. Uh, our economy is booming despite the pandemic, despite what Washington, D.C. continues to throw at us. Uh, and so thank you so much for your service, your continued service to your community, your time here in Tallahassee, and your time here with us. Folks, don't forget to check us out at Florida Majority on all of our social media channels. And please make sure uh, to learn more about Representative Chuck Clemens at 
floridahousegop.com. That's floridahousegop.com. And we'll look forward to catching up with you on the next episode. Thank you, Representative. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely.